Today we're going to talk about six main foods, well, they're kind of categories of foods that can potentially cause cancer. There's some really key things you need to know. Number one, it's the dose that determines the poison, okay? And so the key with cancer is chronic exposure to a certain thing that can create inflammation and or dysfunction in a certain part of your cell. And that certain part is called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the energy factory of your cells that uses oxygen to help burn fuel. With cancer, that mechanism is destroyed. Then you have a backup system that is used to keep things alive. And that system is called fermentation. Okay, So it's a whole different pathway that's set up that acts as a plan B for survival. And so when this shift happens, that cancer becomes out of control. It loses its mortality. It can live on forever. In this presentation, I'm not going to talk about all the different things that can feed cancer. I'm mainly going to focus in on the things that can trigger cancer. Let's talk about this chronic exposure. It can be chronic exposure to like pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, things like that. I mean, just pesticides alone in the United States, we release 1.3 billion pounds of pesticides into our environment every single year. Let's say, for example, you do yard work and you're constantly involved with pesticides or you're doing farm work, you're definitely more susceptible to having more exposure and more chronic damage. But again, it's the dosage. It's the chronic exposure of that poison. You have something called radon, which is kind of this invisible odorless gas that can leak in from the soil from you know into your basement and this is why when you buy a house they check for radon because that can potentially lead to lung cancer you have cleaning chemicals you have even old age is a risk factor why would old age be a risk factor well over time you kind of lose your mitochondria and become more damaged with time making you more susceptible to having this condition occur viruses like human papillomavirus and certain fungi even parasites can do it. Even certain type of bacteria can trigger it. And then, of course, you get pollution. All right, so now let's start at the top of the list. Alcohol, okay, no surprises there. Alcohol damages your mitochondria. But again, it's the chronic exposure of alcohol. Number two, trans fats. And a trans fat is something that's partially hydrogenated. Why would a hydrogenated oil, which is fully saturated, be any less damaging to a partially hydrogenated fat. So from my viewpoint, if you're getting hydrogenated fats, which is in a lot of junk foods, that can create a problem with your mitochondria. Number three, burnt or charred meat. There's two chemicals that are generated when you burn meat, HCA and PAH, like on the charcoal grill. A couple of the things you can do to counter that, you can add garlic to your meats, rosemary, certain spices to help lower the um, risk factor. Then you have something else called AGES. What is AGES? It stands for Advanced Glycation End Products. What is that? That is a compound created when you combine a protein with a sugar under heat or a protein with a fat under heat. So a couple of examples of that would be barbecued ribs, right? You're heating up these barbecued ribs and you're creating this advanced glycation end products. So there's kind of a situation where the protein fuses together and it can create all sorts of inflammatory processes, especially with your mitochondria. Now, what about uh, heated uh, protein and fats? Well, you have ice cream. You cook this protein with the fat and you create these ages, right? And then you're consuming this ice cream on a regular basis like a lot of people do. All right, number five, processed meats. You have nitrates in processed meats that are potentially associated with cancer. Usually people consuming processed meat are also consuming a lot of other things that are probably not healthy. But what they've done with this meat is they've combined red meat with processed meat and they lumped it into one category, uh, both of those causing cancer, which I have a big disagreement just because the research is so weak and there's a big difference between grass-fed, grass-finished meat and grain-fed. There's a big difference between red meat and processed meat. And what if you eat red meat without nitrates? So anytime you look at things that cause cancer, you'll see that red meat stuck in there. 
And so that's one factor that I, I disagree with, especially since there's nothing in the healthy version of red meat that has been evaluated with any substantial scientific studies that show evidence of it being damaging at all. In fact, I know a lot of people heal their bodies by consuming red meat because there's a lot of things in there that are beneficial. All right, number six, ultra processed foods, okay, aka junk foods. They rebranded junk foods as ultra processed foods. It sounds a lot better, but the actual foods are not a lot better. Now, remember I talked about chronic exposure, right? Well, guess what? 50% of all of our calories are ultra processed foods. When we talk about ultra, we're talking about extreme. When we're talking about processed. We're talking about turning something that started out natural into something that doesn't even resemble what it started out to be. You're going through many, many alterations using chemicals, heat, pressure, deodorizing, decolorizing, and you're ending up with this end product that is so refined, so different, so altered, so dead, there's nothing alive in it. You know, people talk about, uh, well, they're just empty calories. It's, it's more than just empty calories. And so when we consume it, we have to pull from our reserves vitamins and minerals to be able to metabolize it. And just think about how much inflammation is created when you're consuming synthetic starches. You're not even saturated fats, they're unsaturated fats. They're seed oils, which go through industrial processing and a lot of refining, and they're very, very unstable. I can't think of anything more unhealthy to eat than ultra-processed foods. It's, it hits the bottom of the barrel. And what's really interesting about this is, let's start with maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is considered a starch, not a sugar, even though it reacts like a sugar way more than actual sugar. On the glycemic index, it's way, way, way high. And maltodextrin is an ultra-processed ingredient that is considered generally recognized as safe. It's called GROSS. Generally recognized as safe is something that uh, a company can use. They can basically do their own studies and they can just tell the FDA it's safe. There's no FDA testing on this. People think, oh yeah, it's been tested, but it's only tested by the manufacturing company and there can be a lot of different shady loopholes with that. Maltodextrin is considered generally recognized as safe, gross. We have modified starches, which are gross. We even have high fructose corn syrup, which is gross. Corn oil, soy oil is considered gross. Canola oil is considered gross. Corn syrup is considered gross. And here we have the situation where manufacturers can kind of use this gross to give you the illusion that it's safe, when in fact, from my viewpoint, it's not too safe. Now, if you haven't seen my in-depth video on the most unhealthy food in the world, okay, you should check it out. I put it up right here.